stricture. That is the problem. So she is having intermittent dysphagia. She comes every two or three months to the dysphagia. When we see, what we see is a fibrous stricture in the upper and mid esophagus for which she requires dilatation. How to manage a stricture in the esophagus is a big topic. So what we are going to show here before we do this case is two types of dilator available. We will show you. After that, we will demonstrate to you endoscopically how the stricture will look like and how to measure the size of the stricture. And when you take a biopsy, when you suspect malignancy, then how to go beyond the stricture, then how to pass a guide wire, then how to dilate. And when you perforate or if perforation happens, unfortunately, how to recognize and what investigation to do. So these are all the questions have to be answered at the end of this particular okay. session. Okay, so with that little introduction, let us start the procedure. So let us start with the <coughs> preparation. As I said, a good preparation means half the procedure is already done. You have to get everything done. So I wanted this patient a dilatation done. An ideal dilatation setup is only in OT where you have a CF control. Because when I do a dilatation, I have to be sure that I am in the esophagus, inside the lumen, I am not in anywhere. The only way to ensure is by image intensifier. So that limitation we have now. But because I know this case already, we have done several times, we can do it in the outpatient setting also. So how to select simple, straight, easily dilatable structures for the beginning. For a tortuous structure, very tight structure, structure at the ends of the esophagus, like upper end, or the lower end, where there is a little change in the direction, you better you do it under C on the Like for example, if this patient comes with a post tricot stitcher, I can't do it here. It's difficult. Take OG junction. At least in the first time, I will do it in the But here in the mid of Vegas, usually the straight stitcher, no problem. So I have two types of dilator. The one dilator is this one. This is called a balloon dilator. Okay, you can see what I have in my hand is a balloon which is in a compressed format. Okay, this is always called a C or E balloon. Okay, this is the controlled radial expansion. C or E stands for controlled radial expansion. Now, what do you mean by controlled? When I have a special device that is called inflation device. Okay, there is a special device inflation device. I will so there, there is a pressure transducer. So as she twists this handle of this inflation device, the water will go and it will dilate the balloon. Under the pressure will be shown here. As I exert more and more pressure at a controlled way, this will keep on dilating in a preset diameter. For example, in this pressure of this PSI, Okay. per square inch it will go this diameter. So this is meant to dilate up to 15 millimeter at a set pressure. That's why it's called a controlled radial expansion. It will expand all around 360 degree radial expansion. This will go what? Through the biopsy channel. So this is why it is otherwise called a TTS balloon through the telescope balloon. This is the ideal one to do but the unfortunate thing is it is expensive. Ideally, it is a disposable. Once you use it, and you can't reform and use it. But we here in India are very unique that we know how to reuse the disposable things. So we have some techniques of. So this already has been used in three cases. We clean it, we ETO it, then we again reuse it. Okay. So that's what we do. Otherwise, it is this. That's why each one costs around fifteen thousand rupees. So it is expensive way of dilating. So through the telescope, C or E balloon. I am not going to show it here, but you remember this, we will use it in one case in the next one or two sessions. Okay, that's, for that you need a balloon and an inflation device. The simpler dilatation is what we call, we need a savory guide wire for which you need a malleable metal guide wire. This metal guide wire has a malleable tip, spring loaded tip. So this will be go through the biopsy channel. Once I go inside, if I ensure I am in the stomach, I take the endoscopy out. So it is not through the endoscope. Endoscope is out when I am dilating. Then dilator alone, like an endoscopy, it will go over the guide wire. Depending upon the size, we have various sizes available. Okay, and I will show you at least one or two sizes. 
So this is a typical Sayabari dialect. It's a PVC. You can see it's very very supple. Okay, and it is very very durable. Once you buy it, it is a lifeline lifeline guarantee. It is all be, it's with me for the last 15 years. Hope to serve rest of my life hopefully. So this is very durable. That's why you have to put your money on a good set. Usually it sets around 65,000 rupees. You put five six dialects available, okay. and you will leave it. And so for each dialect, it only costs for you about 100 rupees only. You see a number of dialects you do over a period of so many years. Very very cheap, effective way of dialecting. But this causes a linear tear in these villages, not a radial expansion. So it is actually the perforation risk is slightly higher in this one compared to that one. So you have to be very, very gentle in dilating. How we are going to do a gentle dilatation with a rather very you know, gruesome and, I mean, apparatus, I'll show you how to pour. In other words, I will be exerting less force. I won't use my right hand. I will use my left hand less force. That is the one beauty of this. That is using less force. So first, let us do a diagnostic endoscopy. Now, patient has been given analgesia. Midazolam along with Tramadol. You can even give a small dose of ketamine or fentanyl depending upon your experience and convenience. Nasal cannula is given, pulse oximeter is there, patient is comfortably seated. I'm entering the esophagus. You are seeing the post recoil region. I'm entering the esophagus. As you can see in the monitor now, you will be seeing the stick chair. I have See, this is stretch. Stitcher. It's, it's very tempting to go, but if you go here and here, they're all flimsy, you can perforate. Okay, it's actually the way the diameter is normal, is the diameter is around 2 to 2.5 centimeter. Okay, now this area has a diameter of about a centimeter. Open. See? It's up to here. See? The size is around here. See? Now, so it, this admits only, just about admits this, so it means about a centimeter in diameter. Whereas here is a normal, see, open, so it admits how many, you can see, one, two, three. So this is a normal esophagus, close it, that is abnormal esophagus. As you go closer, because of magnification, it will be tempted to go, you will be very careful. You have to understand, there is a fibrous texture there, okay? So you are, just stay there and then see the distance. This is a 25 meters. From here to here, I can see beyond that also normal. You can see through the stitcher. Sometimes you may not be able to. Then I will put a malleable guide wire. We carefully see, this is the area, repeatedly it was torn. So you can see there, little wedge, like a sallow, like an up. It is everywhere, every time when I do dilatation, that's where it splits open. Okay. And now it is all nicely covered by mucus, fibrous tissue, not mucus. Okay. Now it should go easily there. I mean the guide wire should go easily. I presume now it is in the stomach. The only way to ensure. If I want, in this case, I can go. But I will avoid doing it because I have to teach you the right way. So you do not go all the way. Just keep feeding the guide wire. Your staff there, the other end, will catch the guide wire. Okay. Then, next important thing I'll do is measure the length of the guide wire which is outside the patient. Very important. And just to go the nearest to wall, it is hitting the wall and after that there is about another one, okay, six inches or so. That is the length. That length should not get shortened or lengthened. If it lengthened means the guide wire has come out. So that is the one way. So I know the measurement. Now I feed the dilator number 10. When you remove the endoscope how far you are sure that you are pushing the same length. Okay, that is what? That is by experience. That is, I take the endoscopy 5 cm back, I will push it 5 cm in. First you so, pull 5 yes. cm, then we push back. Keep feeding the guide wire as you come back. That is called the railroading. That is a very important thing. Okay? This only comes with experience and also your staff should also be very cooperative. Otherwise, what will happen? As you take the endoscopy, the guide wire, especially the, now I will show you what mistakes we can happen. So there should not be any buckling of the wire. The wire should not buckle like this. Okay, guide. So you go, for example, if there is any suggestion, I go a little twisting movement like this. 
engage in the oral cavity and get some lubrication and a good lubrication and the patient will resist your dilator so patient is going to do extension like this so occipit hand on the occipit is very important my assistant so see you fix the guide wire so only way is the only thing dilator will go and the dilator is fed by my left hand which is supinator not pronator and the exerted force is coming from my shoulder which is adductor on my side if you keep it like that it is forceful so i am keeping like that so gently with my wrist movement only it will go and there should not be any undue resistance there are markers in the dilator like 40 50 i have already gone up to 40 so that means i have got cross stitcher now i am going to take it out how i take it out and go to the tip of the dilator like this i feed the guide wire i pull the dilator i feed the guide wire pull the dilator i feed the guide wire inside and pull see so it is a two way process one goes in one comes out like this and as soon as it completely exits dilator she caught the guide wire she start to do that now my other staff will take the whole thing out there is no blood here that means we haven't breached the mucosa another damage hasn't been done yet once you see the blood stop it that means you have done further thing is going to cause more trauma now we'll measure it again we measure it again you see there is a centimeter longer if at a light slightly cut off but not too long so we are happy we are not too happy but only but it's like this then i will either push it in or i'll take it out and do it under vision one more time so dilator position is very very important ensuring the dilate in the guide wire is in place i'm going for the next size okay i have a 12 size if we follow a rule usually that is the rule of 3 if it is a minimum is 10 you can go up to 30 okay but we are going to stop here at 12 all the under dilate you know, after all the patient has to eat little better we try to you know, make them eat normal food is very difficult so as i said avoid buckling like this so for that i do little twisting movement like this once it goes into the oral cavity very rarely it will problem will happen okay and plenty of lubrication you can see how much we use all this jelly we use for a solo scan now we use liters of the loads of them so just to go in is fixing and i'll go a little twisting around here go go and i'll look at the size okay the size is i felt that you can feel it okay 50 40 40 is so already 40 means we have gone well so we'll take it out so we are anyhow we are going to take it out but i'll just see there's a little amount of blood you can see slowly start causing damage okay because we don't we can manage one more dilator but i don't want to over dilate okay the last thing one is to see a perfect so again measure just for a satisfaction see slightly longer so leave it take it. if you want you can just gently push if you want or if you are not sure you just take it out you see the bend is not up huh? and any problem there next thing is You, when you do a next scope, this is the most difficult scope. Don't over inflate. Don't push too hard because it is all friable tissue. So you have to be very very delicate. Check endoscopy. What we are trying to do is a check endoscopy. Come in. 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 When I touch, that's where it stands. Okay, but you have to make sure. Go again. I'll come back and show you. Mid is a way that always you be very careful. The fibers you keep on enlarging. And one day you can develop a is a very easy is a very just to lock very easy. So I'm just this is a very junction. Wash, 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 wash. That is the lower limit of the stitch. Okay, that is what level around 32. I'm sorry, 28. 28. What? 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 Okay, that is the fibrous tissue. Okay. Okay, that that is what touched. 
defect or anything. Don't worry about that. There is a muscle, circular muscles. You are able to see fibrous tissue, circular muscle, little blood clot there. That might give previous dilator, little hematin pigment, pigmented area. That is, I am not too much worried, but sometimes you can develop. This is the typical area of tracheoesophageal fistula. We have to look for it. Okay. Just come back, come back. And the patient, once you finish, the patient should walk back. She should not say undue pain in the neck or the chest. There should not be any crepitus. When you suspect anything, you do an X-ray. Or you do a water soluble contrast and you do a any look for any extra vaccination contrast. And if the patient is okay, allow her liquid diet within two hours. And we do nowadays as outpatient procedure. And, but if there is a small perforation or if you suspect perforation, immediately admit the patient. 48 hours to 72 hours, keep the patient in orally. PPI, IV, IV antibiotic, invariably this setting. In a very large perforation, if it happened, unfortunately, then there are some remedial measures possible now, endoscopically. Again, okay? deploying a stent also. So, you should not be tethered, but at the same time, as I said, careful dilatation. We can always have next time. This patient, if she wants to say, Doctor, you have dilated, but still I am not enjoying my food. Next time, ask her to come early, then try to go from 12 to 14, rather than 10 to 14. Slowly dilating, serial dilatation. So, this is what we need to do. And what is the alternative to serial dilatation nowadays we have is that we have a removable stent is available. What we do in this patient, bring the patient, put a removable self-expanding cover stent. That stent will remain there for about 6 to 8 weeks. So that the whole fibros, everything will happen, then you remove it. So, in other words, dilatation happens over a period of several days, so that that will be much better. So, removable covered stent is a solution for an interactable structure which requires repeated dilatation or there is a failure of dilatation or there is a stricture soon after dilatation, like this condition. There is a, so, in other words, there are solutions for each condition. The problem we don't want to face is a operation. So, always no, never be over enthusiastic. Never overdo. That is a small message. Because we have seen ourselves possibly dialyta passive cooperation. That's why from the bad experience we are giving you the lesson. Okay, so with that will conclude now and we go for a small break. Thank you. Thank you.